and introducing how to train a neural network with uh, the neural network tools that we use in this course and for a, a lot of research. This, call is, this tool is called the Torch and we're today in the Torch tutorials which you can find on the GitHub on the Torch repository. This tutorial will introduce you to uh, the idea of supervised learning so that you can uh, train your own network to do categorization of images. This tutorial is broken down into multiple files. Um, the first one is the data, which uh, reports how you can load the data. There's a model, which uh, um, trains, uh, shows you how to create uh, a neural network model to be trained. A loss function that uh, has to be minimized for training of the neural network. Uh, a train script that uh, will actually train uh, the neural network based on the data. Testing script that will test the model trained on the data on the test set. And then there's an actual top file. So let's go look at the top file. Uh, so this is basically a top file. There's is a few parameter. Um, it uses the street view house number data set, for example, to, uh, to try to, uh, um, to give you an example. Um, there's various parameters, for example, you can say, you know, what kind of model you would like to use for neural network. Um, in our case, probably we want to use a, a component. Um, and, um, and various other parameters regarding training. Um, he, what it does is that it sets the default tensor type to float. For neural network training, um, a lot of the training is done in floats with a 32-bit number. It's, um, um, it's actually good for uh, calculating gradients uh, to have a high representation, but in actual execution of neural networks, you don't need more than a few, just a few bits. But, so we don't really need um, uh, higher precisions in, in computation, really, uh, in neural networking. In fact, we could do even with less, but we'll, we're going to do a flow tensor. You can also use uh, CUDA acceleration if you have a GPU with CUDA and you have all the installed packages. Uh, then you basically uh, execute these files one by one. First the data, then model, then loss, train and test. Okay, so it will load up all this all this file and the training is basically done by executing the train function uh, and then the test function over and over in, in a sequence. So we can go back to um, to data, uh, so this is um, without going into too much detail. This is a, a data a script that loads the street view house number, so which which is a which is a data set. Um, so the street view house number is basically free files, right? And so we can decide whether we want to load the small version, the full, and even extra, which is a lot of other um, a lot of other examples, you know. So it downloads, downloads the data set from the web here, downloads it, and then depending on what you want to do, so let's say we do the small one, um, it limits the size of training to 10,000 samples and the size of testing to 2,000 samples. And if you really want to do the whole thing, it's about 73,000 for the full and 26 for the test. These are all images that are 32 by 32, so fairly small. So here we, we load the data set. The data set is loaded um, and then it's put in the appropriate format, you know, to, uh, so that it can be read by the training data. Notice that here we create something so up to the train data size we can we can generate this kind of um, um, representation in a vector. Right? Then we do the preprocesses. So um, what, what is done here is that we create we create um, an array called train data that has uh, data labels and then has a size and you do the same thing for test the data and what we do is once we, we load all the we load all that uh, the loaded the data train data and test the data then we can go and preprocess it for example in this case 
you can convert all the images from RGB to YUV. This is not really done much, much anymore, but um, you can decide whether you want to do it. In the past, the people uh, noticed that uh, in the converting the color space from RGB to YUV was giving some advantages, but these days we prefer not to do these steps. Um, ideally, you want to normalize, once you load up all the data set, you want to normalize it have uh, calculate the mean and the standard deviation and subtract the mean and the standard deviation from the data set so that it's, uh, it's well normalized for the neural network so all the values, all the images are about the same and uh, you can also decide to normalize each channel locally if you want this is also not really uh, done recently so I would uh, recommend you to, to skip this um, and then you can print um, what what you do and you can also visualize a few examples so this is a, a, a data script it's basically the idea is really is really quite simple is to fill up the data with an array of data you know with all the elements from one to um, the size and then you fill it up fill up the labels so that we we have a correspondence between uh, the data that is to train and the labels that you use to train and similarly for the test data. The second step is to take a look at the model. So if you want to take a look at the model, so now we're gonna go in and look for example at, um, um, at the neural network model. So this is a convolutional neural network model uh, that takes uh, as an input a um, number of features you know that we want so uh, number of states and then filter size so these parameters are cre you know created over here number of features that the of the image at the input is free and the size is 32 by 32 this is a 10 class problem so there's 10 uh, 10, 10 possible classes, you know, this is uh, the number from 0 to, to from 0 to 9 basically um, and then there, here there's some parameter for uh, for neural network 64, 64 and 138 the filter size is going to be 5 uh, the pool size is 2 so what when you do when you create this uh, neural network model you use these numbers to, to create a neural network so first of all you do several convolution to 64 you have a non-linearity and then you can do some pooling of different kinds you can decide to do subtractive normalization or not um, these days uh, the last three elements are uh, all this, uh, this this neural network are, uh, is changed and we're going to see more more about it in the future but you can create your neural network and then at the output you you put a multi-layer perceptron generated by linear this function here linear into the input, into the output, and then uh, non-linearity again, and another linear, then into the number of outputs. And so here you're going to have n neurons, each one, one hot encoded with uh, with the outputs that you want. This is the model that you're going to train. Um, well, let's go into the the train function now. So, what the train function does is it basically has a number of classes and the classes labels will be one of these values if you've seen the number one will be one otherwise two and so forth all the way to zero right then it initializes uh, some confusion matrix that it's useful to see you know what which number are confused with what and then log files to log you know the, the training of this neural network uh, so for now we will use uh, the stochastic gradient descent which is a way to do uh, gradient and its back propagation. Um, it uses some uh, various parameters. The learning rate is you know how fast how fast we want to, to change the parameters um, how, you know how fast we want to decay uh, the weights. Momentum is sort of like uh, the momentum in physics so if you're going in a certain direction you don't want to necessarily change direction abruptly this is, helps uh, to avoid local minimal in the training and train a little bit more effectively. And then you can set how much you want uh, the weight to decay slowly if they're not updated, right? 
So these are parameters for the training. Um, the function train, and this is what is called over and over to train. It basically sets a number of epochs, so number of passes through the training set. Uh, you set the model in the training mode, so that sets up uh, all sorts of modules in, in, in training to, to be ready for training, not for actual execution. And then what you do is you loop, you loop uh, all the, all the um, values of the, the, the train data, so all the elements in the train data, you loop in a, in a batch or not. So what you do is, at the end of the day, you evaluate the function over and over again. And then you call an optimization routine that calls this function. This, uh, what this function does is uh, takes basically the model that you had before and the inputs, and it forwards the input through the model to get the output. So this is like worth beautiful forward propagation. Mm -hmm. And based on the targets, which are your label, and the output from the neural network, it computes an error. And then it computes a derivative of the function, basically uh, try to, uh, to minimize the function. Uh, based on these targets and the outputs, it computes all the, all the gradients and then um, uh, updates all the values, all the gradients um, in, uh, in all the, the weights in the neural network. You com after this is done, you compute the confusions to see you know, which, one, which elements are confused. And then you keep repeating this, basically. The end of the function, the end of the train function, there are some, it gives you the time that it took for an epoch and a lot of logger, which are very, very useful to log what's happening. Next function that we're going to see, the last one, is the, the test function. So this test function basically is very similar to, um, to, to, to the train. It basically goes through all the, the values in the, all the items in the, in the test data set, one by one. And it does a model forward of the input. So you forward the input, maybe in batches, maybe not. Um, and then you, um, you update a confusion matrix between a prediction and a target. Uh, you just check you know, how well you're doing compared to um, how well your model is doing compared to the actual targets. And here you can print um, accuracy on the test set, you know, overall accuracy or, or accuracy for each one of the categories. And uh, the idea is that you you basically, in training, you keep repeating training and test as long as, you know, forever, like in this case, or until for, you know, certain number of epochs or until uh, the error or the accuracy is above what you want. 